call the meeting to order. I ask the county attorney to give the invocation. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity to come and serve the people of Lincoln County. We ask that you just give us your wisdom and guidance and understanding as we make decisions for those folks. Bless each and every individual here. Continue to direct us and look out for us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you all commissioners for coming. The first thing we got on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Is that motion we approve the agenda as printed? Seven items. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Clyde. Second by Commissioner Congressman. All in favor of the motion, let me know I'm saying aye. aye. All opposed, like sign, motion is carried. Item number one, I appreciate y'all coming. Getting here this time of day, we did try to put it off a little late for working folks. You and Brian and Larry. Yeah, hey, I'm working. I'm working. Uh -huh. <laughs> I work. <laughs> the first mile of business is a Brokerage certificates of deposit, and I'm going to let Director Dawes take that from you. Chairman, Commissioners, um, as you may or may not be aware, I, I, my assumption is, is that everybody reads the reports that I send out. <coughs> got a copy of the audit. <coughs> is, this is our current balance sheet as of the end of the fiscal year. It is unaudited. Our auditors and I are working on. Did you bring magnifying glasses too, Director? No. no, sir, I did not. <laughs> you got to realize all. now we got a bunch of old folks here. Oh. Yeah, they're, 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 they're sets. Yeah. All right, Chairman, Commissioners, if you will actually look over on page two, at the bottom of page two where it says equity, um, you'll notice there's three items. Uh, first is reserve for inventory. That's our fuel in the ground. And the next one is fund balance general fund. So the unaudited fund balance uh, for the end of FY22 was $5,384,610.52. Uh, that represents uh, several years of revenues over expenditures. So we have a little over $5.3 million uh, in the bank. Uh, currently, it's in our checking account. It's, let me take that back. It's in our checking account. It's not in the bank. Uh, we were at one point earning a half a percent interest on our checking account balances. Uh, Farmer State has made some changes with their business checking accounts. And as of the end of August, we're not earning any interest on our, our checking account. Our, uh, the principal of our external auditing company um, had mentioned that um, with that large of a balance that we should probably move some of it out and look for some uh, investment opportunities that, uh, that meet government standards for investment opportunities. And so he had recommended um, that we talk with um, Mr. Douglas uh, and his firm about um, um, in investing uh, some of those in CDs, or brokered CDs, which are different. Uh, and I'll let Mr. Douglas explain all that, uh, where we would get a higher return. These would be FDIC approved. And so uh, I, my recommendation is that we move uh, two million um, out of our general fund into brokered CDs at uh, $250,000 per CD so that they would be uh, FDIC insured and that we would stagger them and we would have some that have six month maturity, some at 12 month maturity and some at 18 month maturity. We could obviously go longer. Uh, we could do more money. Um, and, um, but then I'll, if, if I can, Mr. Chairman, I will uh, turn it over to Mr. Douglas to talk about broker CDs and, and uh, some of his thoughts on this. Well, we all look at it two million, right? Two million, yes, sir. Okay. Which would which would leave which is less than half of our fund balance and would leave us uh, a considerable amount of money in the bank and and this is our slow time of year so we have uh, a little over even even though our fund balance is five point three we have a little over five million dollars in the bank this is our slow time of year so this, Mrs Danner will uh, bring us uh, about th almost three million dollars in just a couple of months and so. 
that this is a time where we're actually working a little bit on our fund balance, so, which is the reason I don't want to, de to deplete it all. And of course, every day we read in the newspaper about the economy. I, I just I want to leave us some room. Mr. Doug, before you start directing it off, let me, let me ask you some case I missed it. Are, are we still talking about a half a million for six months, a million for 12 months, and a half a million for 18 months? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. We would have to split it up into small chunks, but right. the total of the chunks. Piece, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I ask yes, a question sir. before I forget? Okay. You mentioned FDIC a uh, while ago. All of this is in the former state bank now, correct? Yes, sir. How does that fit in with the FDIC if it's two hundred fifty thousand? It don't. It, it, okay. it, it doesn't. But say we're not invested. We ain't got so all the checking account. That's, 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 that doesn't that's, matter. Let's let's, <laughs> let's let's be recognized, folks. Speak. Everybody's not speaking one turn. So, Mr. Henderson, you got the floor. Well, I think they answered my question, uh, but I. I I'm, didn't know whether a checking account applied. Right, and I think that's what Mr. Douglas is going to talk to us about. But Commissioner Tyker, you you got something? No, I was just telling him that that's not an investment. That's a holding mm -hmm. a checking account. These CDs that you talked about, are they put in cedars? Cedars? Yeah. How are we how are we busting them up where? They're going to be insured by the FDIC. I know the FDIC has late raised their limits. Like yes, sir. They raised it up to two hundred fifty grand. Now it was a hundred grand for a long time. Uh -huh. But yes, sir. That's my job is to be sure that none of my clients are more than two hundred fifty grand in any bank. So you so, will be splitting the banks. They want all. Oh, all yes, they were the same banks. They'll they'll be uh, two fifty max. Yes, sir. And then some of them, however. The gentleman decide uh, to to split them in terms of six months, twelve months, eighteen months. Um, you know, it's important that we ladder, not put all of them at one date. Right. Um, if if we if we go out long term and then rates go up and then we're stuck in that rate, and not able to take advantage of the new higher rates. Um, so by keeping it very short term, you, you take out a lot of that interest rate risk. So. What we what we strive to achieve is to take away that uh, that interest rate risk by by laddering the maturities and and then also by um, keeping it at 250 max. Um, these brokerage banks that you're using, all of them have good ratings through the S and P as well as AMBS and stuff like that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the minimum rating that y'all food with? Well, I, I don't know that CDs are rated like corporate bonds where you've I'm got... I'm talking about the institution. Yes, sir. The financial institution. I mean, they all got ratings yes, sir. All according to their strength. Are, do you know that information? Um, no, sir. I just know that they're all FDIC insured. You know, we do have an indication uh, on our inventory uh, that shows ratings on on banks, but um, we, we usually just suffice it to say that they're FDIC insured up to 250 grand. That's that's fine. That's as good about as good as it gets. Um, because it, it was the tank. They, Realize it can take up to 20 years to get your money back from yes, the FDIC. They can, they can drag it out. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Douglas, if you would go ahead. And All right. with I'm, I'm with Raymond James, um, which is based out of St. Petersburg, Florida. And we're an investment firm, much like a Morgan Stanley or a Merrill Lynch. And um, I, I was contacted about uh, the need for some short term. CDs with with decent rates, and um, uh, well, uh, I've I've been in the business for for 36 years. Uh, you might be familiar with uh, Raymond James through the Raymond James Stadium. I had the Super Bowl there a couple of times, I think. But um, these these brokered CDs, we we're able to go all over the country and and um, 
try to find the best yields on, on CDs as, as we can. Um, I would like to pass these. insult anybody by reading to you but I think that it's real important that we hammer home the these two issues in, in terms of FDIC insurance and liquidity um, this is a uh, broker certificates of deposit update that our people put out weekly uh, unfortunately it's uh, on Wednesday so we, we just missed it but as as you can see the uh, one year CD shown here is four and a quarter percent this time last week and the, the two year at four and a half percent. Now, um, if you'd like to, I would encourage you to use your pen and just go a little bit left of that one year CD. I can't write on, on material that I give to you due to compliance. Um, they're real big in, in terms of internal use only, but you can write on there. And, what we might do is just write just to the left of that one year, four and a quarter, right? Six months, 4%. And then just to the right in between the one year CD rate and the two year CD rate, an 18 month CD is 4.35%. So bear with me if you would uh, in, in terms of reading to you, but we, we think that it's really, really important that we hammer this home. Six months. Six months was four percent. Six months was four percent. One year is four and a quarter, and eighteen month CD four point three five percent. About FDIC insurance. Currently, the FDIC limits the insured amount, including principal and interest for all deposits held in the same capacity to $250,000 per depositor, per insured depository institution, and $250,000 for certain retirement accounts. The FDIC has permanently increased insurance coverage to $250,000 for deposits held in all ownership categories, including single accounts, joint accounts, trust accounts. Therefore, excess holdings may not be insured IRA and certain other retirement accounts will maintain the $250,000 insurance coverage. About liquidity. Does anybody have any question about FDIC before I move? All right. About liquidity. Funds may not be withdrawn until the maturity date or redemption date. However, the brokered CDs are negotiable, which means that although not obligated to do so, Raymond James and other broker dealers presently maintain an active secondary market at current interest rates. Market value will fluctuate and if the CD is cashed out prior to maturity, the proceeds may be more or less than the original purchase price. Holding CDs until term or maturity assumes the holder of par value redemption assures the holder of par value redemption. CDs are redeemable at par upon the death of the beneficial holder. For a detailed overview, they can suggest that you look at a, um, at a, at a link there. But if there. So what we're saying about the liquidity, if the, the CDs on the statement are prone to fluctuate in value on a statement from month to month. If you buy a, a uh, six month CD at 4% and then the rate goes to three and a half percent, then you, you're probably gonna be trading at a premium or above the thousand dollars per CD, okay? Um, but like I had mentioned to the chairman and Ernie last week, the best way to avoid all of this in terms of a premium or a discount showing on your statement is to just don't put more money in the CD than, than you can't wait on. You gotta be able to wait until maturity
to be assured and guaranteed of that um, par value of that $1,000 per CD. Yes, sir. Are these walk away terms? Walk away? Yes, they're net. Yeah, the yes, end sir. two, like we got one in for a year and it matures. We can take that money and walk. We, we're not obligated to reinvest it no, for sir. a certain amount of years. Anyway. No, sir. Okay. Hey, thank you. That's a good question. Any other questions? I've got one if you don't mind. All right, sir. Commissioner Clyde. Oh, when, when they talk about you can have Lincoln County uh, government, uh, of course, we're going to put in 250000 because that's what FDIC insures. If we went to a bank, uh, can we just have one account of that bank for 250000 or go to another bank for the other 250000 You can't have two Correct. and both of them be covered. Okay. Correct. Yes, sir. You have to limit each so. bank to 250 grand, whether it's you and your wife or uh, your wife by herself or uh, a, a retirement account or whatever. you got to keep it under 250. Yes, sir. So we're going to have eight <coughs> different banks, is that correct? Well, um, w we had talked about, um, and, and maybe I misunderstood last week, Mr. Chairman, um, we, we had mentioned, I thought, uh, two and a half million, so I had kind of talked, uh, written out here that we would uh, suggest the, the, the six month have three tranches or three sleeves of $250,000 CDs from three different banks, all right? And then same thing with the uh, 12 months have three tranches of $250,000. So between those two, you're looking at one and a half million dollars. And then I was gonna suggest the, the remainder of the money uh, go into four different sleeves at 250 grand each. But we'll, we'll recalculate if, if we're looking at two million instead of two and a half million. And I apologize if that was my fault. But we can, we can wait them toward the short term if we feel like rates are going to continue to go up. Of course, it's anybody's guess. Um, or we can put it on the on the uh, on the longer end um, with 4.35 on a on an 18 month. Are these uh, marketable rates? I mean, are these rates? Are they in something that's guaranteed or they guarantee in this minimum return and in investing this money in the market? Um, I, I'm not sure. I mean, banks do all kinds of uh, investing with uh, funds that they bring in on CDs and, and loans. So, uh, Is this a variable product? No, sir. It's a, it's a set. What you're seeing on these rates is what you see is what you get on it. There's, it's, it's no, uh, it, it sounds like you might be um, thinking perhaps it's an annuity and it's not at all any kind of well, an insurance. Well, you've got fixed annuities, you've got variable yes, annuities, sir. you've got fixed CDs and you've got variable CDs. I was just wondering what their investment strategy was. I'm not familiar with variable CDs. Okay. And we don't do any variable CDs. Sure. Mr. Collins, I'll um, start with y'all way over my head. Um, but let's say a CD for a year, we're saying pays 4.25%. Yes, sir. Now, can that percentage, or can it go down? In no, the sir. No, sir. You're, yes, locked, sir. you're locked in to earn 4.25% for 12 okay. months. And then... All right, go ahead. I don't want to. No, that's fine. Right. I was going to say, if, when we get interest in from a CD, it's going to be moved into uh, your your account, another account at a FDIC insured bank because we've already got two hundred and fifty grand. We don't want to add to that with the interest. Commissioner Tigers, is this simple interest or compound? Simple. Paid one time a year. Uh, the short-term ones are, 
Yes, sir, but the longer term ones come in all different shapes and sizes. They may be quarterly or semi-annually or, or annually. But the shorter term ones, like a 12 month, are is paid at, at maturity. Okay. Commissioner Henderson. Are, are the rates going up currently? Or? Yes, sir, they have. They've gone up a great deal. Well, I, the reason I was asking, we had one, what was in our packet was from the 12th. Yes, sir. This is on the 19th. Right. And it's gone up considerably since then. Yes, sir. Would we be better to wait another week well, and see what happens? Yes, sir. We want the answer to that. Uh, right, right. <laughs> and he's got the camera on me, too, out here. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the whole idea between laddering is so that you, you're taking away the interest rate risk. You know, you say, wow, a uh, three-year uh, three CD is at, at four and a half percent. And then as soon as you jump in there, it, it jumps up to a, a five and a half percent. Okay, and you're saying, dog on it. I missed it. Now I got to wait three years for it to mature to be able to roll that money into the new higher rates. So that's why it makes sense to do, like Ernie was saying, you know, six months, 12 months, 18 months. Mr. Clyde. My question is more directed at you and Ernie, but uh, with, with the earnings we make on the interest at the end of whatever term, you know, are we dedicating that money to a certain cause? Are we putting it, we are worried about it at that time? Or? I would think it were, we were rolling over to the general fund. Yeah, we'll bring it back home with it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you probably heard Mr. Douglas mention, and, and he said it again, and I wanted to bring it out, is that we're, we would be investing the maximum amount in each tranche, and so we can't have a penny more. So any, any return, any investment, whether they paid out at the end or whether they paid out at the um, quarterly or however the dividends are paid, that those would all be deposited into our general fund. So however those would do. And then, of course, at the end of, so let's just take the two two or three tranches, whatever we decide, for the six month, that, that half million dollars or whatever it is for the six months. At the end of six months, we would come back to you and say, would you like us to roll this over again? We don't, you know, we're, we're financially sound, we don't need this money, and, and we could roll that either into another CD or do something else with that, so that gives us a little bit of opportunity on that. And the same thing with all the other rollovers when we get to them. So we're looking at 6, 12, and 2, right? 6, 12, six, and, 18. 12 and 18. 18. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little skittish about going much longer than that. Well, <laughs> once the six month matures, it can be renewed at 18 because we're going to be they can all start yes. being renewed at 18 months because we'll have a six month roll coming every six months, right? Yes, sir. That's the whole whole idea behind it. And when each one is getting ready to mature, then we'll bring it back to y'all to know that it's about to mature as to whether you want to cash it in or roll it over. Mr. Douglas, is, did I understand you say they fixed? I know you said they wouldn't go down, so if we put one in there for 18 months, it's 4.35. And it, and it won't get any less than that no matter what happens to the market if it goes if the interest rate goes up will that go up or is it just fixed for that length of time as far as the rate that is earning mr chairman that's that's locked in that won't change um what i had mentioned was that if um if if interest rates drop the value on the statements in the secondary market is going to show it trading at a little bit of a premium you, you follow what I'm saying? If I, if I buy a 5% a, a bond and then rates go to 3.5, obviously I'm going to get a premium for that 5%. So on the statement, it's going to show a premium. And now, you know, we try to get people not to get excited and say, oh, sell it now that it's at a premium. You know, just hold on to it until it's maturity. Do we get, do we get a monthly report or quarterly report or how does that come? You, you get a monthly statement, Mr. Chairman, but you can go online and see your account every day. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm assuming that the director will go online every day and look, but I would <laughs> like for our, I would like if we do this, our monthly report to be included in our financial report, Director Dawson. Yes, sir, Chairman. We will make that happen. 
Any other questions to Mr. Douglas? A, a suggestion that, that I would make, Mr. Chairman, um, in terms of rates, um, you know, we looked at we looked at this that I passed around. Mm -hmm. I could go in tomorrow morning and be all different. It could be changed. I mean, it's it's an ever changing deal in terms of whatever interest rates are doing any particular day. Um, so what I'm telling you is, first thing tomorrow morning, that four percent six month isn't guaranteed, but we're hopeful that it'll still be there. Therefore, y'all might consider saying, okay, uh, Mr. Doss. Uh, we give you the the uh, ability to go to a 3.8 on the six month if that's what you need to do. Uh, or you can just wait around and hope that it dropped off to 3.8 and we'll come back to the 4%, just a matter of how tough you want it to be. But I would suggest that you give to Mr. Doss um, a, little, a little latitude on, on all of the maturities because it's a it's a fluctuating issue. Do y'all follow what I'm saying? I, I understand what you're saying, but what if what if but, we do, what if think about how we're gonna word this? But what what would if if, if tomorrow when you gonna lock it in, you can't lock it in today. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, sir. That, that's why you say the weight this that, might change. Yes, sir. That, that tomorrow when I go into the to my office, I, I can look on the screen and see the inventory and, and buy it and have that locked in rate. But what I'm saying is in a, in a couple of days time, they, they can fluctuate and will fluctuate. Director Dobbs. Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I think a, a possible motion would be to uh, grant uh, the chairman and the finance director the authority to um, invest um, up to $2 million in um, in brokered CDs with an interest rate of not less than 3.85% uh, in any one CD. Okay. And then and then it would give us the uh, ability to not invest over 24 months. And I'll be happy to, uh, to see. 18 or 24? Well, we may decide that a two year is okay when we're looking at it, but, but but the board would say not to invest greater than 24 months and not with an interest rate of less than 3.85% and not with a value of greater than $2 million. That gives us a little latitude. Uh, um, a little wiggle run. Yes, sir. Interest rate is going to be up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. you heard you heard it. You heard it now. The authority a little latitude that we would not exceed 24 months and not less than 3.8%. 8.5. 3.85. Yes, sir. And up to $2 million. Up to $2 million. I'll ask the clerk to read the motion. Grant Chairman Norman and Finance Director Albert authorized approval to invest up to $2 million with interest rates not less than 3.85% up to 24 months. How would you like me to change that wording, Ernie? Uh, I think in it, in brokered CDs. Okay. I know I'll speak it. Not to Mr. Chairman, do you want to mention that it's going to come out of a certain account? It's going to have general funds. And yes, sir, general fund. Okay. Two million from general fund. Okay. You had to read that. <laughs> Authorize Chairman Norman and Finance Director to invest up to two million from the general fund in interest in brokered CDs with interest rates not less than 3.85% and up to 24 months. Matured. Matured. Okay, you heard the clerk read the motion. Is there a motion that we adopt the motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? I second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Tanksley, second by Commissioner Henderson in discussion on the motion. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Collins. Oh, uh, and y'all, you know, they may have mentioned this, but sir, you're not doing this just for the heck of it. No, sir. What does y'all speak? Um, to be real honest with you, we don't make much money selling CDs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they want to sell the stocks and bonds. But the bank pays us that, that we're issuing okay. the CDs for. Okay. And what you see is, is what you get. It's a net 
I, if I say, if I quote Mr. Dawson, four and a quarter percent, it's going to be four and a quarter percent net to him. The bank pays you. Yes, sir. They okay. give me an ad boy. Boy, I don't know you can do that. I gotta go over here. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Chair is not. All in favor of the motion, let it be known saying aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign, and the motion has carried. Mr. Douglas, we appreciate it. My pleasure, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome to sit here through these other two items if you want to, or you can be excused. <laughs> I think I'm going to get some hamburger help. I thought that's what you would do. Thank you, and I guess Ernie and I will be in touch with you tomorrow sometime, or Ernie will anyway. All right, sir. Thank you. Pleasure meeting all y'all. It's my pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Take care of our money, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know where to find me, right? <laughs> we will. <laughs> Have a safe trip. Thank you, sir. You can ask. Item five is a budget revision for the tax commissioner. The tax commissioner is here. You have a letter in your packet, and I'm going to let the tax commissioner tell you what she's asking us for. Don't ask me to stand, but I'm, I'm crippled. Um, Talk a little loud. Okay. I have never asked for anything like this, but I'm having some health problems. I'm going to have to go through need replacement, but I got to go up channel before the insurance will let me do that. And we having a lot of mail, and one my girls just time, they can lose some time without taking them. And I would just like another part-time girl to help me out till the end of December. Okay, let me, let me make a little comment. Uh, I'm going to Mr. Gay, get the finance director to tell you a little bit. Your girls are not going to lose any time. We changed that. We go on to something that has to be managed by department heads and constitutional officers on the times of their employees. They gain, well, I know you should be trying to tell it, Director Doss, if you would explain again for all of us to understand the PTO as quickly as we can. Chairman, uh, Tax Commissioner Danner, Commissioners. So uh, earlier this year, well, I guess it was last, earlier this year, I guess, we switched over from um, a static uh, sick leave policy and a static vacation policy to a pay time off policy. Um, and and it's, it's tiered based on the number of years that you work. And, and so there is a maximum number, and the maximum number is six weeks. Of, uh, of pay time off um, based on your uh, longevity. And so we always had a maximum. In the past, we had a maximum of three weeks of vacation. And so uh, you, could, you could roll over your vacation until you got to three weeks. And once you, you know, were a 15-year employee, you, you know, that's all you ever earned. And, and, and you would never, you just didn't earn anymore once you got to the maximum benefit. And that's where we are. So we did away. You may remember earlier this year we had some employees that, because of conversion issues, they had some time that they had to use in a 12-month period. Otherwise, they would lose it. We actually paid out those employees so that we didn't have this again. We do have some employees that hit max. Um, I think Director Broom is an employee who's uh, got more than 16 years, and so. Uh, you know, all he would ever earn would be six weeks. And once we get there, Director Seymour, so we've got a number. So we don't have any employees um, who will lose any time if they don't use it. Once they hit their maximum, they just don't earn any more time until they fall below the maximum. Do you know the maximum with Bill Burroughs? I, I was trying to look it up, Mr. Chairman. I didn't. I was asking we got some, oh, I'm sorry. And that's what you got. Linda that's what your responsibility is to keep up with that. Them. Because it. Tawanda is pretty much at her. She's uh, almost maxed. Yeah, she's almost maxed. maxed. And, and, and here's what, while he's looking that up, here's, here's what I think the feelings are of some of the commissioners, and I certainly is me. And it, I'm not I'm not against what you're asking for, don't get me wrong, I just don't have this opportunity to tell you this too often. We all know that taxes are paid somewhere between the middle of October and a lot of all to be something you have a three month, 90 day wonder to pay your taxes on. I would think that the, that the people knowing what they got, the 
time they got, knowing they coming into the season when they really going to be busy, that if they're close to the window of their three weeks, that they would be taking that time off before they get into this part. They really don't need to be trying to take a lot of time off in the last part of the year when people pay paying taxes, because that's the busiest time of the season, these three months. I won't let them and, I, and, and I understand that. The next, the next question on it is, we do and we have for a good many years added above the, added a thousand dollars to your budget for part-time help during the tax season in addition to what your two girls make. I think Director Doss told me that equates to about 90 hours, is that what we said? Uh, yes, sir, approximately 90 hours, assuming $10 an hour. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong on this, because I don't know, but I'm thinking that like when Ms. Gibson worked for you, didn't she work like five or six or seven hours a day, three days a week or something like that? So with, with that said, if you look at what you got and you do what you've been doing, if you bring somebody in, you got about enough time with that thousand dollars to carry you to the end of the tax season. Maybe not quite enough, didn't we say, Director Dawson? We might have yes. to add a little more to that. I think I, I think we would we would need a, about five hundred dollars more. That would would definitely get uh, her through the end of tax season with what we have now, yes, sir. So, commissioners, here's what I understand. I understand that the tax commissioner is asking us to get a little a little more time. If that five hundred dollars they added, that took you to fifteen hundred instead of to a thousand. And I think you were at fifteen hundred up it until it, up until a few years ago and I don't know why for some reason it's, it's, I think maybe they wasn't using that whole fifteen hundred. I think that that um, you know I don't think we're gonna sit here and get in a a lot of discussion over five hundred dollars. I, I Five hundred dollars would satisfy you if it went to five hundred. We approved the budget, gentlemen, two two months ago or so. My recommendation is, if you do this, is that we that we increase that five hundred dollars, but we don't put it in the tax commissioner's budget. We take it from the general fund contingency budget and allow her to use that five hundred. So it's not raising her budget uh, tax commissioner's budget by five hundred dollars. It, it, it would stay the same, but if she exceeds that thousand then we could pay it the balance of that five hundred out of general fund contingency. Which don't make that reoccur in the next budget and it don't affect this year's budget because we have it budgeted in this year's contingency. So I think that I think what she's asking for is we give five hundred dollars and she'd be happy, and, um, and and we would we we could we could grant that doing it by not changing any budget bottom number that eight point three million is not going to change. So I would say if we do this, let's do that. And do it out of the contingency fund, and we open for any questions for me or the tax commission. I have a motion we do that, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we have a motion. Is that a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Commissioner Clyde, second by Commissioner Collins. Any discussion on the motion? All right, can the clerk read the motion? I'm not sure. All right, <laughs> let, me, let me hit you with it a minute. The, the motion is that, that we will approve $500 for okay. additional $500 for part time help in the tax commissioner's office to be paid from general fund contingency line item. Okay. That right, Director Dawes? Yes, right. sir. Yeah. All right, any questions? Have a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion, let me know saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Chair is none, all the motions carried. Thank y'all. Thank you, good luck on your foot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need. Okay, <laughs> okay, let's get rid of these other two. <clears throat> okay. Can I be excused, y'all? Yes, What's your name? Shawnee. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to ask you that every time I see it. Okay. Um, 
Bam, the coroner's office, the coroner is here. As I have told some of you, if not all of you, we've talked about a vehicle for the coroner's office for on several, yeah, on several, for several months. The, the reason that Tim and I have talked about this, or the coroner, and, and I don't think like talking to a coroner, but, <laughs> well, I think I'd rather talk to him than not be talking about it. <laughs> I don't want to believe, take up a lot of time on this, because y'all all know what I'm telling you, we've discussed it in here before, but the coroner came to me several, several months ago, due to the fact we tie up an ambulance a lot, we run a lot more calls now than we used to run. And when we are tying, tying up an ambulance to remove and take a body somewhere, and we got an ambulance in Augusta or Thompson or Washington or wherever they are, and we get another call, and they head it from a residence or accident scene to the, to the mall or funeral home, we don't have an ambulance. Plus ambulances, as you know now, up in the $200,000 range, and we run them up and down the road, as Casey hears all the time, too much uh, to tie them up. So the vehicles that I had been looking at was in the twenty-five dollars to $30,000 range um, that is out here, these little vans out here, Ikers and Kevin Beggs had. So I asked Robert Flanagan and Wayne Willifer and some of them if they could be just on the lookout and we didn't want to spend that much, more than 14 or 15 thousand is what I was looking at. Robert called me the other day, he was at a sale and, and he talked Wayne Willifer and some other guy out of bidding against it because it was for the county. And they didn't, but he got this van and I mean it's as clean as a whistle. Likely what they got it because the county is, is not detailed it, but they cleaned it, pressure washed the inside and out, and it, it's got a divider between the seats in the back, and it, it worked perfect for the. It's not a stretcher; it's a gurney. What? Gurney. It's a gurney. Sound like a mule to me. But long story short, this this vehicle would be stationed out at the emergency services headquarters on Global Drive probably until we do the building on 220, which is closer to his residence. And we could we could put it there. It's not gonna be a vehicle. You don't want a car in this vehicle running up and down the road with car on it every day. I mean, there's something to it when you see car on the side of it. So I think Tim and I have discussed this several times, but we did discuss it again um, this week. It was the last week, anyway, we just, last week when we got it. That um, I talked to Director Broom, and it could, it could be housed out there, and then it can be moved to the other place. We have an office in there that could be used for a long period of time, probably. The, the coroner could have his office in there, uh, where he does his paperwork. If he's at his house, he's a lot closer to the van if he gets a call to pick it up there to go to the north end or whatever, wherever he's got to go. And it would it would be stationed there. If he's if he's on duty, uh, it's between him and Director Broom, but I suggest, and I mentioned this to both of them, that maybe try to work him out of the new substation where where, where it's at. But that's logistic wise, y'all have got to have that. Long story short, we've got the van. I hope y'all approve it. No, it's yours. Huh? It's yours. <laughs> it is if you don't, but I can tell you now, we can sell it and make money on it. But anyway, we got a van that, that we bought from, um, Robert's got a name, what's the name of his sale? Uh, Wilkes Supply. Wilkes Supply Company Incorporated. That's a 19, I mean, it's a 2013, I believe it's on your paper, and I'm not looking at it, it had 88,000 miles on it. Um, and it was $17,000. And I think that van will last a long time for no more miles than we would use. You know, it used to be when we took a body to the crime lab, we, I had ridden in the ambulance with Ernie before. We used to 
used to take our ambulance and take the bodies to the line to the crime lab. We don't do that too often anymore because now we use a transport service. Transport service. We have a transport service that comes and takes them up there to keep us from having to, to go that far. But this this vehicle, that's that's what it be, and I'm open for any questions on the car it is. Mr. Tanks. Is it a gas one or a diesel? Yes. Yeah. Do you know what engine it's got in it by the Both one of the I'm not sure what it should be on that. Probably six not on that. Commissioner, it's a forward too. I know that. <laughs> Right. It's out of the shop. It really looks good. I think they doing a little something to it. We went ahead and changed the oil on it. It's got new, good, good tires on it. Real good tires on it. It's, it cleaned up good, and they're going to put some the lettering on it and, and put the radio in it. And, and, and hopefully, next week or so, it'll be ready for the road. Y'all ain't going to over light it, are you? No. We're real careful with it. In fact, we got, we got a, the coroner's talked to some coroners and the, and the AKO sign or something's doing a professional design of like most coroner vehicles are. It's gonna look sharp when it comes out, but it's not gonna be overkill like Director Brown's car. Well, I mean, can I make a statement? Yes, sir. If we come out of Justin all night and come up on this little wreck with somebody done red the red light, I don't think nobody got hurt. The state patrol was there and a couple of Columbia County cars was there. You could not see nothing. The lights were just straight blinding. And especially on that George State Patrol car. And it happens all the time. Uh, this won't be used like that because it's really not an emergency vehicle. Even though it does have some lights, I think in the one day, it may be in the tail lights and some of them yellow. Because if you are, are at an accident scene, you can light it, it, it lights up. Just, if, if you die at your house and he comes out, he can turn a red light, a blue light, or whatever light it is. I doubt he didn't come. I doubt he <laughs> Okay, is there a motion? So moved. The second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Tanksley, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? Mr. Chair, I would say those the lights and all this won't be as bright as those on Stan Tanksley's storage buildings because you can't see that. They're not blinking, though, Cooper. No, they're blinding. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. All opposed, like sound, motion carried. We need a motion to adjourn. Motion by Commissioner Henderson, second by Commissioner Clyde. Any discussion on the motion? Chair, here's none. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. All opposed, like sound, motion carried. We stand adjourned.